Hi, and welcome to this introduction to Saturn 2, a major new update for FabFilter's saturation and distortion plugin. Saturn 2 adds new saturation types, ranging from subtle to extreme. New improved crossover filters for multiband settings. Extra modulation options and a new interface design with animations to make it easier to understand what the modulation is doing. Let's start on the mix bus with the new very subtle flavour of tube saturation. This is intended for mastering applications and remains gentle and transparent even with the drive knob all the way up, making it easy to dial in just the right amount of colour for a full mix or a submix. The old HQ oversampling option is now joined by a new superb version which will eliminate any aliasing, even with the most extreme settings. We can now also choose linear phase oversampling if the extra latency is not a problem. We also have a new subtler version of the tape style and also the saturation style. Plus, we have a whole new category of transformer saturation styles including a subtle version that sounds great on a full mix. The gentle transformer style also sounds pretty clean and subtle with low drive settings. But gets more obviously crunchy at higher settings. While the warm transformer can get into overdrive and distortion territory. But can still be used more subtly with lower drive settings and might still be useful on submixes or even the whole mix. The transformer styles all include DC blocking, like a real transformer, which acts like a high pass filter to clean up ultra low sub bass content. Like its predecessor, Saturn 2 is capable of multiband processing. Simply click at the top of the display to add a crossover and split the signal into up to six bands. This can be useful with complex material like a full mix, as it eliminates any intermodulation between bands. If I select all bands and crank the drive knob, I can now drive it much harder before it starts to sound nasty. Saturn 2 now allows you to change the slopes of the crossovers from a very gentle 6 dB up to a surgical 48 dB per octave. And if you have the linear phase option enabled at the bottom, this will give you linear phase crossovers as well as linear phase oversampling. Of course, mix bus processing doesn't have to be subtle. Try the new breakdown style for cool spot effects. Multiband distortion can also work very well with drums. This allows us to choose different distortion styles for each band and drive them by different amounts as well as eliminating messy sounding intermodulation between the low and high elements. If I select all bands together, I can dial in multiband compression with just one knob. The algorithm under the hood is highly program dependent and works well on almost any source. So this is a really fast and easy way to get some multiband squash going without having to trawl through the myriad parameters of a normal multiband compressor. Alternatively, you can turn the knob the other way for easy multiband expansion. This can be useful if you want to drive the distortion into obvious crunchiness without losing too much of the dynamics. We get even more dynamics options when we explore the modulation. Let's click the plus symbol and add an envelope follower. If I click to expand its settings, we can choose its input. As with version one, we can choose the main input or the sidechain input. But we can now also pick an individual band, so the signal driving the envelope follower comes after the crossover filters. I'll pick band one, so the envelope follower is only listening to the low kick drum frequencies. Then I'll select band one and drag to link the envelope follower to the gain control for the band. The result is an upward expansion effect, which we can control with the depth slider to create a powerful extra low thump for the kick drum. Notice the gain knob now has an animated ring so you can visualize the modulation more easily and see exactly what's going on. If I invert the modulation, we now have a compression effect for the low frequencies instead. 
Another new option in Saturn 2, the envelope follower can be switched to a new transients mode for transient designer style processing. This used to be possible in version 1 by using two opposing envelope followers with slightly different settings. But this new option makes it much quicker and easier to set up. The envelope follower now reacts to changes in the level instead of the absolute level. So we can reduce the thump of the kick drum with negative modulation or increase it with positive modulation. Another new option in version 2 is to leave the modulation depth at zero and create a fader with which to control it. I'll drag a connection over to the modulation depth slider and another appears below it. Now I can use the slider to control the thump of the kick drum without having to first select the low band and its gain knob to show the modulation depth parameter. Of course, I can also create multiple assignments. Let's also link the slider directly to the gain knob, but flip the modulation to negative, so we also get some gain compensation when we add the transient boost. And I can adjust the slider for this direct assignment to set exactly how much gain compensation is applied when the fader is all the way up. If you want, you could also link this fader to the compression knob, which might help to make the resulting thump more consistent. And let's rename the fader Thump. Multiband processing can also be useful on bass parts. I'm going to isolate the low sub bass in a band, then add harmonics with the warm transformer style to thicken the sound and create more apparent weight. Then I'll add an envelope generator, which I'll link to the low band's gain parameter. And I'll invert the modulation so the gain of this band is reduced whenever the envelope is triggered. Now I'll expand the envelope settings and set it to listen to the side chain, to which I've already routed the kick drum. Now the envelope triggers for every kick drum hit. Notice the helpful level meter that appears around the threshold knob, which makes it much easier to set this correctly. And the animation of the gain knob, which makes it easy to see how much ducking we're applying, and easy to judge how much makeup gain to add in case you want more sub bass between kick drum hits. Notice that this is a stereo bass patch, courtesy of the unison feature in Twin 2. If I open the master section and switch to mid side mode instead, the character of the distortion changes, as we're now distorting the sum and difference signals instead of left and right. Sometimes this might sound better, when it's worth a try when distorting stereo sources. It also means I can dial down the side channel for just the low band and force those lowest couple of octaves to mono. I can't talk about distortion without mentioning guitars. Saturation can sound great on guitar parts, even when they were recorded through a distorted amp. Often adding presence and clarity, or extra attitude. The new warm transformer style can add a lovely thick mid-range. If you're using an amp sim or reamping, you can run Saturn 2 before the amplifier, where it can act like an overdrive. Or a fuzz pedal. Or I could use the new breakdown style to create whammy bar style pitch shifting. But Saturn 2 also includes four new guitar amp simulation styles, each a detailed model of a very different sounding amplifier and speaker combination. These can all produce pristine, clean sounds, or bluesy overdrive, or full distortion. You can tweak the tone of the amp using the four bands of EQ provided. But you can also use the modulation options to change the response in more complex ways. Let's add an envelope follower, 
and use it to modulate the drive knob. Now the sound gets much more distorted when I play loud, but cleans up when I play gently or back off the guitar volume. Alternatively, I could modulate the drive the other way, so the sound gets relatively cleaner as the input level increases. This can create lovely bluesy lead sounds that don't get too dirty when you dig in hard, and can work well combined with some of Saturn's one-knob compression. If I add an envelope follower and switch it to the new transients mode, I can link this to the output gain knob and add a little burst of energy at the start of each note, a bit like a cranked valve amp. Of course, you can also run a multiband setup and mix and match different amp models for different parts of the spectrum. Multiband distortion can be interesting on guitar parts, especially when playing jazzier chord voicings that quickly get messy with full band distortion. But alternatively, you could select the low and high bands and turn them all the way down, leaving just a single band in the middle. Now let's create an LFO and use this to modulate both the low and high crossover frequencies, which gives us a wah type effect. I can customize the sound of the wah by adjusting the crossover frequencies to make the band wider or narrower. or by switching to shallower or steeper filter slopes. If you have a MIDI foot pedal, you can use the MIDI controller modulator instead of an LFO for a more traditional wah pedal effect. Or alternatively, you could use an envelope follower to create an auto wah that responds to your playing dynamics. But in this case, I'm gonna use the envelope follower to modulate the phase of the LFO instead. Now the filters do react to my playing dynamics, but in a more complex and less predictable way than a traditional auto wire effect. Okay, let's take a look at the final new style called Foldback, which I can best explain with an analyzer. Here's a sine wave running through the heavy saturation style. As the sine wave gets louder, the tops and bottoms of the wave are shaved off and it gets squarer in shape. If we analyze the resulting harmonics, we see all the odd-numbered harmonics, as you would expect. Driving the distortion harder makes the higher harmonics louder, but they all still get progressively quieter as they increase in frequency. Now let's try the foldback style. This time, the tops of the sine wave aren't just clipped off, Instead, they start to fold back down to create a radically different waveform. If we keep going, the peaks continue to fold back until they reach the opposite extreme and then fold back again. Let's have a look at the resulting harmonics. They're still all odd numbered as the fold back is symmetrical for positive and negative halves of the cycle. But they're no longer neatly ordered in level. As I push the fold back distortion harder, the patterns of harmonics change in complex ways. The audible effect on a simple sine wave is reminiscent of FM synthesis. But the complexity of the output increases exponentially as the complexity of the input increases. If I add just one more sine wave, we now get complex sum and difference partials which change according to the interval between the notes. Let's add an X LFO, which can be configured as a step sequencer if required. The easiest method is to pick one of the step sequencer presets as a starting point. And let's link this to the pan ring around the drive knob to create some differences between the left and right channels for a pseudo stereo effect. That's all for now. As usual, there's a detailed manual available via the help menu or you can enable help hints that pop up when you hover over a control. Thanks for watching.